Yes, guys. So we will start discussing about a very important standard called as Index 34. Deals with something called as interim financial statements. What is this interim financial statements and why is it so important? An interim period for which a financial statements are prepared is governed under the standard Index 34. What do you mean by an interim period? Any period which is shorter than an annual financial statements or shorter than an annual period is called as interim period. Annual period is generally for 12 months. So if I prepare financial statements for a period shorter than 12 months, then it should be considered as interim period. So you could prepare financial statements on monthly basis or quarterly basis or half yearly basis. These financial statements will be called as interim financial statements. Now, which act expects an enterprise to prepare an interim financial statement? Now, one is the company could voluntarily prepare interim financial statements or if it has to be a particular statute, then your SEBI listing agreement for any listed enterprise will require you to present financial statements on either quarterly basis or half yearly basis. Quarterly basis for all those enterprises which have their equity instruments listed in stock markets. For any enterprise where the debt securities are listed, you will have to present financial statements on half yearly basis. So these are enterprises which are required statutorily to present financial statements on interim basis and such kind of enterprises have to go as per the presentation given under India 34. India 34 just like India 1 talks about the minimum requirements of financial statements. Guys nowhere under India 34 it will prohibit you from presenting a full set of financial statements as you prepare at the end of each year. Nowhere India's 34 will prohibit you from doing that. But India's 34 says, look at the timeliness of information. Look at the effort that you, have prepared, that you put in to generate a full set of financial statements. To cut down on the effort, to reduce the time taken, we will propose a condensed set of financial statements. We present to you a condensed set of financial statements. Condensed set means in brief. If I have a complete standard in 30 pages, I am trying to cover it as a part of your fast track session in probably an hour or one and a half hour time. That is concise. So the same way condensed set of financial statements is a brief version of your full set of financial statements. Clear? So this is what India 34 talks about. It talks about the minimum requirements to be presented as a part of interim financial statements. Again, I'll repeat, nowhere the standard prohibits an enterprise from presenting its full set of financial statements at the end of each interim period. However, with keeping in view the effort it takes and the time it takes in presenting a full set of financial statements, India's 34 comes out with a condensed set of financial statements. What are this condensed set of financial statements? Let's see. A condensed set of financial statements has a basic minimum components of a condensed balance sheet, a condensed statement of PNL, a condensed statement of changes in equity, a condensed cash flow statement, and selected explanatory notes. It is not condensed notes to accounts, it is selected explanatory note. Now, the intention of India 34 is to provide an update to the complete set of recent annual set of financial statements. However, India 34 does not prohibit or does not discourage an entity to publish a complete set of financial statements as described under India S1 in lieu of condensed set of financial statements. However, because of timeliness of information, it is always suggested to go for a condensed set of financial statements. What is this condensed set? Condensed set of financial statement means in the condensed balance sheet, condensed statement of profitability, condensed statement of changes in equity, condensed cash flow statement in these four statements, at least the headings and subheadings, at least headings and subheadings as they were included in the most recent annual financial statements should be presented. At least the headings and subheadings as were presented in the most recent annual financial statements should be presented in interim financial statements. Clear? However, additional line items can be introduced to avoid any mishandling of facts. If a particular line item, if avoided or if not provided in the interim financial statements, could give a misleading results in the, in the interim period, 
then such line items should be included clear and along with that you don't have to give a separate com complete no notes to accounts it is sufficient for us to disclose only the material facts as a part of your selected explanatory notes clear how do i present a comparative of this whenever i present financial statements for an interim period then the comparative should be provided like this the end of the current interim period balance sheet should be compared with the comparative period of the preceding financial year so however remember guys whenever i talk about a balance sheet the end of the current interim period should be compared with most recent annual financial statements that means let's say i am preparing it for q3 in 2020 q3 is ending on 31st december 2021 sorry 2020 it has to be compared with the balance sheet on most recent annual balance sheet date that is 31st march 2020 so 31st december 2020 should be compared with 31st march 2020 as far as the balance sheet is concerned however when i come to pnl i'll present four columns in the balance sheet four, sorry four columns in the pnl what are the four columns current interim period q3 of 2020 uh, 2021 comparable with q3 of 1920 at the same time year to date what is year to date year to date means from the beginning of the current reporting period until the end of the quarter that means starting from 1st april 2020 up to 31st december 2020 is called as year to date cumulative current year year to date until the end of the quarter compared with preceding year year to date until the quarter that means what current year starting from 1st april 2020 up to 31st december 2020 compared with 1st april 2019 to 31st december 2020 clear this is called as year to date your cash flow statement and your statement of changes in equity should always be presented only on year to date basis you will not present it for quarter it should always be on year to date so when i am presenting q3 statement of changes in equity or q3 cash flow statement then it should be starting from 1st april 2020 to 31st december 2020 compared with the comparable period in the previous year that is 1st april 2019 to 31st december 2019 clear for an entity which has a seasonal revenue guys what is seasonal revenues seasonal revenue means for a particular season there is a high demand during other seasons there is a particularly low demand let's take for the example your air conditioners during the period starting from march up to august you will have a significant increase in the demand but however subsequent to august when you start touching the periods of september october november december and jan you will find that the air conditioner sales will try to fall much below the normal level so that means these are seasonal revenues whenever you have seasonal revenues financial information of 12 months up to the end of reporting date and cumulative information of the previous 12 months in the past period will be more useful to identify for example if i am presenting the financial statements of q3 for such a kind of enterprise which has it is highly seasonal in nature then in such cases for 31st december 2020 my financial statements will be considering last 12 months so 1st january 2020 to 31st december 2020 comparable previous year should be 1st january 2019 to 31st december 2019 this is only possible when the enterprise has seasonal business highly seasonal business air conditioner is a bad example of seasonal business guys because today air conditioners are being used throughout 365 days disclosures on compliance to indies there shall be no disclosure unless and until there is a non compliance if there is a non compliance then the fact should be disclosed change of any estimate during the interim period it should only be given on a prospective basis so last year's uh, last year interim period should not be restated if an estimate of an amount reported in the interim period is changed significantly during the final interim period of the financial year 
but a separate financial report is not published, then that final interim period, the nature and amount of the change in estimate shall be disclosed in the notes to annual financial period for that year. That means last interim period should not be restated. Same thing we have seen even in the case of India S8, when we talk about a change in accounting estimate should always be given a prospective effect. Same set of accounting policies as we have adopted under annual financial statements should be adopted even in interim financial statements, except for when, except when there is a change in the uh, accounting policy from the most recent annual financial statement. Sometimes it does happen that you change an accounting policy in the current year and during that quarter, if you are presenting your interim period, you will have to change the accounting policy. Clear? Measurement of interim period should always be date, made on year to date basis and the amount from, uh, reported in the previous interim period are not retrospectively adjusted. However, the nature and the amount of significant changes is disclosed. Guys, interim period also has to be restated. If you cannot restate the preceding year, preceding interim period, then at least you have to signify the amount and the nature in and disclose those items. Revenues received seasonally or cyclically, such revenues should not be anticipated, should not be deferred. That means you cannot allocate it over the entire 12 months because they're seasonal revenues. You have to recognize it as revenue in the same period in which they arise. Same is the case even with cost. Cost also, if it is an unseasonal cost, that means it is not an insurance premium. Insurance premium is paid for entire 12 months. So you can evenly spread it over the entire interim periods. But sometimes certain costs cannot be anticipated or deferred. If they cannot be anticipated or deferred, you cannot defer it over the different interim periods. Restatement of accounting policies. We have already seen whenever there is a change in accounting policies, even your prior period financial statement should be uh, restated unless it is impractical. That's it guys, we don't have too much of discussion under India's 34, but one simple logic you remember under India's 34, you have certain questions regarding measurement of tax during interim period. Most of your questions in ICI are predominantly regarding measurement of tax expense during a particular interim period. And remember, whenever I talk about measurement of tax for a particular interim period, it should be based on average rate of tax. What is your average rate of tax? We have already discussed average rate of tax when we are talking about India's 12. When there is a slab rate of tax, we apply average rate of tax. Similarly, in India's 34, for us to recognize tax expense during an interim period, we will have to recognize it on the basis of average rate of tax. What is average rate of tax? Total tax expense of the previous year divided by total taxable income into 100 is average rate of tax. Using that rate, I will apply it on quarterly incomes or your interim period income to identify what is the tax expense during the current reporting period. Clear? This is the concept which has been tested. I have included certain examples also regarding that.